First of all, as a human being, of course, you, you want to reduce suffering, you want to reduce pain, you want to cure people. So, of course, cancer is a major disease. It could be family, friends, etc. So when you see the suffering, uh, you can make a, an effort to reduce it. And of course, if you can cure cancer, so it would be a, a momentous achievement. I have a fellow, and I still remember the conversation, I have a fellow calling me from Jean Coeur, Quebec. He's a miner from Northern Quebec, and he was told he has three months to live. Je suis allé, je suis allé me masser dans mon truck, puis j'ai fait mon téléphone, puis j'ai dit, on vient de m'annoncer que j'ai un cancer au pancréas. Mais sauf que moi, je savais pas c'était quoi un pancréas. Okay. Quand je l'ai su, euh, ça m'a fait assez peur, merci. Puis là, à un moment donné, je me suis dit que je pouvais pas aller plus loin que la recherche. Je pouvais pas avoir un mot plus loin que ça, la recherche. If you're not doing basic science, you will treat people the same way that you were treating them 25 years ago. If, if we don't understand cancer, we cannot fight it. We cannot see it coming, we cannot recognize it. You're gonna get nowhere without this basic research and you can't skip this step. But that's the nature of basic research. You ask a question, it can be right or it can be wrong, but it's trial and error. And we always have to ask the question and do the experiment. One of the important things about the Goodman Cancer Center is that it remains on the McGill campus not away from it, so that we can deal with the mathematicians and the epidemiologists and the physicists and the chemists. Every single uh, scientist in the Goodman Cancer Center have partners at the hospital, uh, either at the MUHC, at the Jewish uh, General, at the Siegel Cancer Center, at the SHIM. Science these days is pretty much team science. You can't, it's very unusual to be able to investigate human diseases to, to a deep degree on your own as a single group. Uh, mutations in the genes I was working with were identified by Will, right across the street. The great thing about having a place at the Goodman Center is that you've got this meeting place between basic scientists and clinicians. And they also have an advantage because they're connected to the Bellini life sciences. You cannot do this research by yourself. You have to be in a good place, and this is uh, the prime, uh, prime place to do uh, research in cancer. You know that the place is functioning well if you pass at midnight or at two in the morning and the lights in the lab are on. But at the end of the day, if you're going to be a scientist, you're going to do it 24-7. There's no break. You commit your life. You commit your life to your science. We've got a group of outstanding individuals, each of whom themselves have an international reputation for excellence. And being surrounded by excellence of people that are totally committed to what they're doing is just a thrilling environment. And you can work for 15 years and have to throw out your research, or you can click. You know, it's just, um, you have to have a great perseverance and a mega passion. Most uh, scientists, basic scientists, are extremely original. Those which are extremely uh, uh, successful, I'm, I'm talking about you know, Naum Sonnenberg here. Naum Sonnenberg is an unusual phenomenon. My name is Nahum Sonberg. I am a member of the Goodman Cancer Center and the partner of biochemistry. I work on uh, cancer now for more than uh, 30 years. He's a very soft-spoken, uh, self-effacing individual who does extraordinary things. So Nahum has committed his life to understanding what's called the mechanism of translation. He has contributed more to that field than anybody else in the world. So this is extremely special. Well, the, the World Prize is a prize that's given by the World Foundation in Israel. It is the highest scientific award given in Israel. It's one of the top five prizes in the world. So um, we cannot predict which one he will get first after that. Uh, and I don't think it's, it's, his, uh, it's in his mind. He does science because it's beautiful. Uh, it's fun to do, it's a challenge. So I think the public forums are a huge success in the community. Um, we're at a stage now where we have standing room only in a room that takes 300 people, even in the mi middle of a major snowstorm, which I think is quite something. 
And I think what we realise from the public forums is that people want knowledge. I think every one of the public forums, there's at least one person in the room that becomes aware that there might be a serious problem and that they should consult. And the doctor who spoke made it a point of saying, number one, that smokers are very high risk for, for bladder cancer. And then number two, and I'm just telling you this in case it ever happens, if you ever see blood in your urine and it even happens once, you must be seen by a urologist. And I took a look at my husband's face and I knew it. Having sat there through that particular lecture, you know, we really look at it and say, possibly save my husband's life. You feel you're giving back to your community. After all, the research that we do, the work that we do here, is funded 99% by the public. Not all ideas uh, can be funded by the government. Not all ideas uh, are easy. If it was uh, low-hanging fruit, everybody would do it. Sometimes it's extremely difficult to do this. We sometimes forget that we must recruit the best and the brightest. And the money that we raise from the gala gives us the opportunity both to recruit these students and postdoctoral fellows, but also to give them some of the best training that we can give, particularly in Canada. Public funding will not do that. If they do, it'll do, happen over years, and we're going to lose people who will go elsewhere to do it. What we need then is to, for the public here, sitting in this room, and their friends and their families to say, look, it's our job to allow the center to go forward. It's accomplished enormous things already, but it's only the beginning of what we can do. I owe it to the donors, I owe it to the general population to do the best that I can to give back to them. Uh, I'm convinced 100% that uh, if we give all the resources we need, we'll solve a lot of problems, we'll solve a lot of diseases, and uh, life would be much better for mankind. We are thankful to you for helping finding the cures that your grandchildren... I was getting emotional. <laughs> that your grandchildren will be thankful. We are here because of the next generation. Um, hopefully, one day there will be a cure for cancer. But I uh, continue to believe that I could maybe survive this malady. -là. I'm not resigning. I don't know why, but I'm not resigning. I think maybe I'll pass through this. We hope so. I mean, that's, that's been our goal from the get-go, yeah. and he's fought it thus far, and we'll continue to support him.